coronavirus. You know, our government think they do a good thing trying to protect us against this virus, but they can never do. They cannot. They cannot. The only way you can be protected against this virus is when you turn away from evil ways. Because this thing is an attack of Satan that come because the people's got big holes and gaps in the armor because of the wrong they do. For example, abortion, which is child murder. That's one example. Many others. There's so many unrighteousness on the earth at this point of time, all over the earth. And we need to pray. We ask God that he will turn the hearts of the people away from this evil, all the many evil that they do, like child trafficking, and um, many world leaders involved with um, pedophilia, um, having sex with very young girls that was trafficked and is uh, keeping arrested, where even world leaders go and have their sexual intercourses with children, which is crazy. And I tell you, that's why I cannot believe all the world leaders. They are crazy. They go to such places where these girls are kept at certain places, even islands, because I know this because some of them escaped, so by the way, and they do these things, and also child traffic, and the, or human traffic, not only child traffic, but also human traffic, and then these people get, get sold as slaves in Muslim countries like Iran, Arabia, Arabia and some other countries that is Muslim countries, in our, on our continent, by, by our own people, they do not get kidnapped by the Arabs. They are kidnapped by the people of this continent. And in Morocco and in Libya, at this point of time, always in the past, even when Gaddafi was there, our big friend Gaddafi was there, slave markets in Libya and slave markets in Morocco. At this point of time, always been. And if it's not, we're not going to pray, it's not going to stop. These poor people, they get kidnapped, they get sold there in the middle of the night so that people might not know. But the government there knows about it. They get their cut. And we need to pray against these things because God is not happy. And you know, governments make a big open door and there's a big gap in the armor. So this coronavirus, and I tell you, coronavirus is not the last one. There's another one coming, my friend. And if we cannot close the gaps, these things will destroy the human race and innocent people. So we need to pray that people will come to repentance, that nations will come to repentance, and that governments will come to repentance and turn away from their wicked ways in the name of Jesus. There's a lot of um, um, human right abuse on this planet as well. It's in Cuba, where Christians get severely persecuted. It's in Russia, where Christians get severely persecuted. It's in China, where Christians get severely persecuted. It's in Vietnam, where many Christians get persecuted. It's in all the Muslim countries, where Christians get severely persecuted. There's, there's a great abuse of human rights. And then there's child labor, where children's got to work for almost next to none money, especially the DRC. We need to pray that these things will stop on our planet and that God will convict people who's involved with that. And if people don't want to repent, we should pray that God remove them from office and give other leaders that will serve all the people in those countries and all of the countries on the planet, this country and all the countries, that God will give leadership that will serve the people and have the best of the people in, 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 the, in their hearts in the name of Jesus. A government is not supposed to be the big shots. Government is supposed to be the servant of the people. They should have all the interests of the people in heart, not their own interest. Because Jesus said, the greatest among you shall be your servant. Amen. So we're going to pray for these things. So we're going to pray against human right abuse, human right violation. We're going to pray against that. We're going to pray against child traffic. We're going to pray against human traffic, two different things. Child traffic, many times, is for, is for slaves, sex slaves. We, the many, many big people on the earth, go and enjoy their fleshly lust 
I tell you, that's bad. Child trafficking, slay, sex slaves, we're going to pray against that. Child trafficking, and also human traffic that plainly straight gets sold as slaves. You get them, I'm going to say again, in Libya, in Morocco, especially. They get caught and kidnapped in Sudan, even Zimbabwe, even in this country. People disappear, you do not know where they are. They take them to Libya, they take them to Morocco, they get sold their slaves to Egypt. To Egypt. And it's for me interesting that all these countries are sitting on the UN board of human rights. But they themselves, they are, they are trading with slaves. That's unbelievable. Countries like Iran, countries like Egypt, countries, countries like Arabia, and many others, almost all Muslim countries, they got slaves and they believe in the slavery. That is very bad. And we're going to pray against that in the name of Jesus. Then we're also going to pray against biological warfare that is happening under our noses. And then chemical warfare. We need to pray against that like in Syria. We need to pray against that as well. All these evil things that is going on on our planet, we're going to stand in a gap together with many other Christians. I know there's many other Christians that pray. We're not alone. And we're going to stand in the gap and we're going to fast tomorrow. From tonight, 12 o'clock, right around the clock, till 12 o'clock tomorrow night. In the name of Jesus. You're going to join me. And we're going to pray. I will meet you here. I'm going to meet you like I meet you now. Tomorrow evening. 7 o'clock. I don't say you're going to come here physically. I will meet you where you are. At your homes. I will meet you. And I will lead you in prayer. And we will make sure. That we turn to God. And we ask God to forgive us. As the nations. And that God will turn the nations. To God Almighty. And then we're going to pray for revival. Because I'm excited what's going to happen on the earth. Because my Bible says, and the whole earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. And all flesh shall see it together. And I'm looking forward to that day. And that is what we're going to pray for in the name of Jesus. And all the other wicked things that people do in Jesus' name. Amen. Any government that doesn't want to line up with God's will after we've prayed, we pray that God remove them. And replace them with godly people that want to do God's will in the name of Jesus. And everyone say amen and amen and amen in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray against all human right abuse in the name of Jesus. And we pray that the people on the earth will be treated with respect in Jesus' name. All people in Jesus' name. It makes me to cry very much when I read and hear about slaves in Arabia. They've got no holidays. They are slaves. They're not workers in Arabia. They're slaves. They're literally slaves. They've got no right, nothing. No right whatsoever. They get treated as animals. So we're going to pray against that as well in Jesus' name. We're going to pray against the pedophilia thing. I hope I pronounce it right. It's an evil, wicked thing where adults got sexual intercourse, men and women, so by the way, because it's always, always point only to men. Men and women who got sexual intercourse with children. Men and women. Don't forget the women. Because the thing is always concerning sexual, sexual sins and sexual crimes always point to the men. I tell you, men and women who's got sexual intercourse with children, boys and girls, that must stop. And we're going to pray that it will stop in the name of Jesus and everyone say amen and amen. So that's what we're going to do. In the name of Jesus, you are with me. And then we see as the Lord lead us. But I said also that some will pray maybe fast longer if they want to. You are very welcome. Just let me know. I'm fasting longer so that I can back you in prayer. Don't do it alone. We do nothing alone. Please, don't do anything alone. If you're going to fast, you're going to fast longer than one day, then you let me know and let, I can back you in the spirit and just pray for you as well in the name of Jesus. God is good in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to say to you that God is good. I want to say to you also this lockdown thing. The government thinks they protect the people. The only way that we can be protected from a virus like this is when the nation or the nations turn to God and forsake their wicked ways. Government also do not know what harm it brings. It leaves many people jobless. It leaves many people in a severe depression. It leaves many people 
with suicidal tendencies. Because if your business get closed because there was no business, then the devil knock on your door and try, will try to get you to commit suicide. And I tell you, this lockdown is not a good thing. Pastor, what do you think is the answer? Well, let me tell you, Sweden does not have a lockdown and they're doing very fine. But they are very disciplined people. Um, Taiwan does not have a lockdown. They're doing very fine. Very disciplined people. They keep their distances. They don't hang around in the eating places and go to the mall. No one has got to tell them that they should not do it. They just know they need to protect themselves. They wash their hands. They're very careful. And our country should learn a great deal of discipline. Because the moment they lift the, the lockdown, you'll get the mall, you'll get Savannah, and you get the beaches full of people. We need to be disciplined. We pray tonight against the lockdown. It's not good for our economy. It's not good for the emotions of the people. It's not good for no one, nothing. So the government does not protect the people with the lockdown system. Government, in fact, put people in a greater danger than before. Because now the people is behind four walls. And men and women start to fight because they start to get irritated because you're not supposed to stay in your house all day long. And now family, family trouble breaks out. Family to, uh, marriage trouble breaks out. People start to get depressed. And they do all sorts of things that they should not do. So governments around the world think they do the people a favor. But they do not do the people a favor. They actually harm the people even more. But my prayer is that the lockdown will stop. But I pray in Jesus' name that our country, the people of our country will be disciplined. So when they lift this lockdown, for example, and you're going to do that in fasting, when they lift this lockdown, you'll get the people, they will, they will be in the hundreds in the mall. Be wise. I pray for South Africa that we will be disciplined. This is not the time to hang around in the mall. You should go to the shopping center, buy what you need to buy, and just go home, and just go and do your thing. Amen? So people ignore this because we do not have discipline. We pray for discipline for our country, our citizens, in the name of Jesus, that they will put into practice self-control and discipline and do what they need to do in the name of Jesus. But we pray that this lockdown will lift and people will go on with business, but please, Lord God, in a disciplined way, in the name of Jesus. We pray for discipline in the name of Jesus. If Taiwan can be disciplined and Sweden can be disciplined, surely we can also in the name of Jesus.